Focus your attention and your lungs. And expand your lungs. When you inhale, feel all the air going and expand your lungs. And inhale very slowly until you can't contain any more the air inside your lungs. Then very slowly, contract your lungs and exhale. And feel the air going out of your lungs. And contract your lungs until there's no more air into your lungs. When you finish, then expand your lungs again and feel the pleasure of the air going inside your lungs. And when you exhale, feel the pleasure of the relief that the air is going out of your lungs. The next time that you inhale, let's use our imagination. And when you feel the air fulfilling your lungs, feel that instead of air, is love. Feel the love expanding your lungs. And feel the pleasure of that love. Spend in your lungs. And when you exhale, feel love going out of you. And feel that pleasure that you can see, but just by breathing, is so much pleasure that you don't need any other reason just for enjoy your life. Then when you expand your lungs again and you feel that love is in every space of your lungs, see how that love going to your blood and follow the blood to every tissue, that every tissue of your body is fulfilled by that love. And that love multiplies right away in every single part of your body. That when you exhale, all that love that you create, it goes to your veins again. Going back to your heart, going back to your lungs, and then send all the love to the people that you love. Every time that you exhale, send your love to your beloved. Send that love to your parents. Send that love to your children, to your brothers, to your sisters. Send that love to all your friends, to your community. Fulfill your house with all that love, that your house become a great sanctuary where love lives, where you live, where you breathe, where you eat. Every time that you exhale, send your love to the entire humanity until every single human is fulfilled by your love. And make your love keep growing and growing that when humans no longer can take your love, send your love to every single animal. Send your love to the flowers. Send your love to the oceans, to the wind, 
to the rain. Fulfill the entire planet Earth with your love. And when the Earth cannot take it any longer, then send your love to the moon and then to the sun, to every single star that you can perceive. Send your love to yourself. When you send in your love to everything that you can perceive, I want you to notice that everything that you can perceive is perceiving you at the same time. And there is no difference in between you and everything that you perceive. Feel that you are love. And every time that you breathe, you go inside your own lungs. And every time that you exhale, you come out of your own lungs. That you go into your blood and you give life to everything that touch, to every tissue, to every cell, to every part of your physical body. And see that your body is the temple where you live. It's the sanctuary where you live. It is your home. And be aware that without you, the body will collapse without life. Without you. Feel all that love. Feel all that joy. Then open your eyes and focus your attention in me. Look directly into me. And then inhale and exhale. Every time that you inhale, take the image of me inside of your lungs. Every time that you exhale, send the image of me in the place that I am right now. Then inhale and exhale. And be aware that I am perceiving you as you are perceiving me. And there is no difference between you and I. We are exactly the same. We both creations. And we both are the sanctuary where life lives. Because I am life and you are life. And life is only one. And only exists one living being that is made by billions of universes. Billions of universes create only one living being. But we, life, is the force that moves everything. We are the same, the same force that is moving this temple is the force that moving your temple. I am you, and you are me. I am everything that I perceive. And there's only one living being. And we are life. If we understand what we are sharing right now, you also can understand any religion that exists already. 
including a religion that perhaps says that it's not a religion, a religion that I call science. Science worship truth. They're searching for truth. They're looking for truth. I can tell you that Toltecs, which means artists, are the ones who go into science searching for truth, searching for itself, for the beauty that they create. I can tell you without any doubt that a scientist is an artist who used the world in order to get as possible, as close as possible to the truth. And when this as close as possible to the truth, it finds out that the only thing that takes him away from truth is knowledge, is what they know. That the only way to become one with truth is by pushing away all the knowledge and becomes one with the truth. Because the real truth is only one. And the real truth exists long before the creation of humanity and will exist long after the extinction of humanity. The truth doesn't need that any human believe in it. It just exists. And we humans, with all the art that we have, what that we are, we use the word in order to get us possible to that truth. But the beauty of that, that is that each one of us as an artist, we express it in a completely different way. But we use the word in order to intend to express our experience with the truth, the experience with our life. Then we use the word to create all those mythologies, to try to explain the experience that we have. But we find out that language is not enough in order to explain our experience. In order to express it with words, we need the power of our wings. Remember, the wings are the imagination of the human. Imagination is much more powerful than knowledge. Then we need to use our imagination in order to at least try to understand what this means. Then right now, I really want you to use your imagination because I will try to express with words something that looks impossible. But beyond the words, if you can feel the place where the words are coming from, perhaps you will understand what I try to explain. Let's imagine that humanity is being blind for thousands of years, that humans never see light. And the reason is because humans have the eyes closed and they don't open the eyes. They was born with the eyes closed, they grow up and they die with the eyes closed and they never see light. And because they are blind, they use the rest of the senses in order to create a whole virtual reality, just like the way we do it now. 
a whole virtual reality, then everything that they know is made by sounds, by smell, by touching, etc., etc. But nobody ever see light. They, they have no idea about this reality of light. Then just imagine that for whatever reason, one human for a moment opened the eyes. Maybe for two or three minutes. Open the eyes. And then he see this reality of objects. They see rain, trees, everything that we see every single day. But they never see it before. And no other one see it before. This is something completely new. Then there is no words in order to explain what this human is perceiving in this moment. He see colors, all those shapes of colors. And obviously has a very strong emotional reaction. Everything is so beautiful. And then for no reason again, boom, the eyes close again. But that person already had that experience. Then everybody around, they go for that person and say, hey, what's happened? What just happened to you? Because they noticed that that person changed completely, just like that. Completely. Please tell us what's happened, because they see that big difference. How can that person put it in words, the experience that they have already? For sure, by using what he learned all his life, will say, well, I was in heaven. I was in the nirvana. I was in the Olympus. I was in the city of gods. I see God face to face. And that is real. This is not real. That is real. If you can understand that, you will understand the creation of all the religions in this planet Earth. Because it's being humans that for one reason or another, they open those eyes and see everything the, the way really is. They have an encounter with the truth. Remember, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. My kingdom is not from this world. There's many humans before, in different places on the earth, that they opened those eyes, and they had that direct experience with truth, but they have the need to explain and they use language the best they can. And whatever they say, it will be just a story because knowledge is not enough to really make an exact copy of what the truth is. But many of the people who saw them, who didn't have the direct experience, they will distort what they say and they create superstition and they create fanaticism. And it takes time until somebody else opens their eyes again and have the experience. Well, angel training, messenger training is a guide for each one of us to open those eyes to push away what we know and have the experience directly with truth. And whatever each experience, there is no way that you can put it with words.
But when you have the experience, you will know you did it. And you don't need a need their experience to do that, no. We just need to be skeptical and learn to listen. That's all we need to do. Of course, practice made the master. Then I want you to keep this story in your mind and work in that story. Don't share it, it's fine. Just work in your own mind with this story. And go deeper and deeper. You can use any trick, like these kind of sounds, that can take you there. You can pray, you can dance, any trick, but go into that story. It's a leap of faith, a faith in yourself, not a faith in any master or any guru. No, faith in yourself. You become your own master, your own guru, and your own apprentice. We just share tools to, for you to train yourself. Practice made the master. And may your practice begins today. That is an ongoing homework. Every single day you will do it. Can you hear me? I'm using words because it's the only way with songs that I can communicate. But I'm not talking about words. Can you hear me? 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 If you can hear me, this is telepathy. It's not about reading thoughts. Because reading thoughts is reading knowledge. If you can hear me, really can hear me, then this is telepathy. Is the language of the angels. It's not about reading minds, reading thoughts. Can you hear me? If you can hear me, I assure you that I will be in your dreams tonight. Perhaps not with this face. Perhaps with this face. But if you really can hear me, I will be there.
because this is how the angels communicate with each other. We don't need words. Science worship the truth. We cannot really speak about the truth. Whatever we say about the truth is not true. Either you perceive it or not, but it's always there. Wherever you turn your face is the truth. Your own hands. It's the truth. You are truth. Not what you believe about you. Not what you want the people believe about you. It's not true. But you are truth. You are the truth. And there's no way you can explain what you really are. Not with words. But if you can hear me, then you can see yourself. And you are the truth. And I am the truth. And it's not important if anybody believes or not. There's nothing to defend. That's what we are. The closest thing that I can do through words is to say, I love you. I love you.